Hey there, savvy internet navigators, and welcome back to the Craig and Dave channel with me, the ball dude. Hold on, that doesn't help really, does it? The channel where we dissect the digital world with the precision of a neurosurgeon and the irreverence of a cat meme. Today, we're donning our virtual tech coats and fedoras because we're talking about private browsing. Is it really the online invisibility cloak we all hope for, or just a pair of those fake glasses with the nose and the moustache? Buckle up as we unravel this mystery. Now, let me tell you a story. Imagine you're writing a research paper on, uh, let's say, the nesting habits of the elusive Siberian hamster. You're deep in the weeds, incognito mode on, because who needs a targeted ad for hamster condos? But here's the twist. As private as you feel, your digital tracks are still being sniffed out like cheese in a mousetrap. Private browsing, or incognito mode, is the digital equivalent of whispering. It's supposed to keep your secrets safe from the prying eyes of your browser history. But here's the plot twist. Google just settled the lawsuit for a cool $5 billion because they were accused of tracking users even when they thought they had their invisibility cloaks on. I mean, talk about a privacy faux pas. So what's the deal with private browsing? It's like going to a masquerade ball. You feel anonymous behind your fancy mask, but your shoes are still giving you away. Your ISP, that's your internet service provider for those unacquainted with the acronym soup of the web, is like the nosy neighbor, keeping tabs on which parties you attend. And let's not even get started with the government's list of VIP organizations that can peek at your online comings and goings. If you're browsing in school, chances are the IT department is the all-seeing eye tracking your quest for knowledge or your quest to beat the next level of that addictive game. Deleting your history? <laughs> That's like trying to erase your tracks in the snow whilst it's still snowing. I mean, spoiler alert, it doesn't work. Now, let's dive into the privacy implication. Your digital footprint, like your shadow, follows you around, sometimes getting bigger, sometimes shrinking, but it's always there. The data collected can reveal your habits, your preferences, and even secrets you'd rather keep, well, secret. Are you feeling claustrophobic in your online bubble yet? Fear not, there are alternatives. VPNs and proxy servers are like your digital getaway cars, making your online activity harder to trace. Then there's Tor, the James Bond of browsers, providing layers of encryption like a spy's many disguises. But with great privacy, comes great responsibility, and sometimes great risk. Truly private browsing, like using Tor, is a double-edged sword. It can protect free speech and human rights, but it also opens a Pandora's box of potential misuse. We're talking illegal activities that thrive in the shadows. So where does this leave us, dear viewers? Private browsing, in its current mainstream form, is like a lock made of cheese. It gives the illusion of security, whilst being very easy to penetrate. And whilst Google might be getting its wrist slaps with the billions in its settlement, the larger question remains, how private is our online world? As we wrap up, remember, awareness is your digital superpower. Understanding your virtual environment is like knowing the layout of the matrix. Use privacy tools, stay informed, and never forget that in the grand web of the internet, privacy is a web that we're all tangled in. To summarize, Despite what many people think, private browsing modes like incognito don't make you invisible online. Your activity can still be tracked by your ISP, schools, and even big tech companies like Google, who recently settled a lawsuit for tracking users in private mode. While private browsing doesn't store your history, it's not a complete shield against surveillance, with ISPs and government agencies still having access to your online activity. There are more secure alternatives to standard private browsing, such as VPNs and Tor, which offer stronger privacy protections, but they come with their own set of limitations and ethical considerations. It's crucial for users to be proactive about their digital privacy, staying informed about the rights and the tools available to protect their online presence. Keep hacking the lessons of life, folks, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications, because here at the Craig and Dave channel, we're not just teaching, we're empowering you with knowledge, one witty quip at a time. Catch you on the digital flip side.